Hello, avid readers, book nerds, and casual observers, and welcome to the read along brought to you by the Lit Round Table. I'm Joseph. And I'm Anna, and today we're talking about The Light of the Midnight Stars by Rena Rossner. All right, part 15. Woohoo! Last section for this week. Yes. So we have the epigraph, which was basically Goodbye, Starman. Hello, Dragon. Mm -hmm. The dragon has replaced the Starman. Right. Which bodes well for everyone involved. Right. You know. So, and we do get a Leptitsa chapter first. And we do learn that the queen, Margita, I keep reading it and thinking Margarita. Queen Margarita is pissed (laughs) (laughs) that her boy Nicholas uh, snuck off and got engaged to this rando while she was all worried about uh, Theodora's engagement. Nicholas went stealth mode and and got engaged (laughs) under her nose. Yeah. She's not having it. No, she's not happy. Um, <laughs> which, again, I don't love this this theme of, like, mother-in-laws being unhappy mm-hmm. with their son's picks. Yeah. It just makes me nervous. Yeah. But, um, so they're preparing for a wedding, and a lot of this chapter is poetry, which mm-hmm. previously poetry from La Pita has meant... Uh, Coitus. Yes. <laughs> With a celestial being. But not this time. So that was that was a nice change of pace. <laughs> mm-hmm. Um she does decide that she wants to get married at midnight under the stars, which is very on brand. Um and yes. she You would say she wants to be married under the light of the midnight stars. <gasps> Yes. Roll credits. <laughs> <laughs> um, so they have their ceremony and then they're married. Mm-hmm. Uh, she's living in the palace now. Um, also, uh, there's a moment where during the wedding, Nicholas says that, oh, he says that, oh, mother says that a falling star is an omen of, and he like, doesn't finish a sentence. And she mm-hmm. says, what? What is it? And But we know at this time, I believe, from other things we've read, that a falling star is also an omen of, like, death. Mm-hmm. So, uh, yeah, that, again, you know, definitely bodes well for everyone involved yeah. in the Starman plot. So, <sighs> especially if you're, like, married to Starman. <laughs> <laughs> and you having know? his babies. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I'm in yeah. danger. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um so Leptitsa got knocked up by the Grim Reaper is what I'm hearing. Well, we will find uh, out. But yeah, they do have their wedding. Um it's 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 very I mean it's poetic because it's in poetry format but also mm-hmm. like the way that she's talking about how she still like does like spinning around him seven times and mm-hmm. she says it's like a tradition from her last village and all this stuff mm-hmm. and um I'm like oh I bet your parents appreciated that one yeah hope dad appreciated seeing that yeah <laughs> you still remember some of the things <laughs> right you know right um so. That's the Lipitza chapter, though. Mm-hmm. Then we get Stana. Mm-hmm. Um, sad girl is still sad, um, and Lipitza's wedding is hard for her. Mm-hmm. Um, and she doesn't think she's ever going to get married. She's like, yeah. yeah. Um, and then parting with her parents is hard. <laughs> this poor girl. I'm just like, I just... And she hasn't even she's, had she's the also, most terrible things happen to her. I just, I, I just, I don't know. She's got middle child syndrome yep. and I, I feel bad for her. But. She's also um, a little bitter towards her dad still because of like the thing that she's, he says to her about, 
like when Esther leaving Esther leaving like her people and not like betraying them. Yeah. Like this thing. And it's like you think she's gonna leave and like rat you guys out? Like what are you talking about? And right. and she's a little bitter. She's like, you wouldn't be she doesn't say this, she thinks it, but she's basically you wouldn't be saying this if I was like your heir or if I was a boy. Right. Like you wouldn't be worried about this. Mm-hmm. Like what are you so there's still some kind of bitterness and resentment towards her dad for yeah not treating her the way she wants him to right so yep that's still a thing yep and then um, the journey to Bulgaria begins on the road again to um, Lovech Lovech whatever however they say it yeah I don't know uh I just say Bulgaria because I know how to say right. that word um, <laughs> right, that's fair. And we learn that Theodora can see all of Stannis' thoughts. I'm a little confused on that. I didn't pick up on that, but maybe. Because she was... I don't remember reading don't that. Well, that's the question. I have a question mark. Because Theodora says something like, you're far away from me, which could just mean, like, I can tell that you're distant right now. But she, like, specifically says something like, I can't hear your thoughts or something. I remember she says at one point, I've lost you. I thought I thought it was just like a colloquialism for like like Earth to Stana. Earth to Stana. Right. Like she's zoned out, you know. But I think it's like definitely happening, but I'm gonna see if I can find it. Because Stana is thinking a lot about her past and Gavriel trying to figure out the best way to like tell Theodora about like sharing her religion and she's like really overwhelmed by like how much uh like catching up she would have to do for theodore to like properly understand the context that is her past um and that's just kind of a struggle she's like how am i supposed to explain all these years of jewish history to you and so that you can properly grasp my history because i think i mean eventually she does but um, she's just kind of wrestling with the idea of sharing the story of Gavriel with Theodora, but right. So I found the part that I was referencing. So she mm-hmm. finally falls asleep, and it feels like a nightmare. Um, describing the dream, I've had this dream before. I've woken up startled and screaming with no one beside me. For a moment, I think that I'm a ghost, and this is heaven that I've passed on to the world to come. Um, I remember hearing my father talk about this world, a place of endless light where there are seven palaces, each one housing different aspects of creation. I wonder which palace we are in. I hear a voice and open my eyes. Theodora. I can see all your thoughts, Theodora says. I swallow Uh, hard. Are you dead too? Dead? Theodora laughs. No, not dead. Very much alive. Though I suppose this is a kind of heaven being beside you. We've set up camp for the night. Yeah, I don't know if it's like a real thing or if or if she's is it real? Is it literal or is it just like someone saying I know what you're thinking even though it's it's not like I read your thoughts, you know. I don't know. I think maybe maybe the reason that I thought it was like literal is that she heard her in the forest when they weren't near each other physically. Yeah, I guess I guess maybe I just interpreted it as you know, it's it's a thing that happens in stories where, like, you sense when when your significant other is in danger and you, like, go to them, you know. It's just, like, a sixth sense right. that people have. But maybe in this instance it is, like, an actual literal, like, superpower thing. I don't know. Right. It's hard to say. That's why I have a question mark after The girl that. can turn into an owl. So, I mean. <laughs> and other things. <laughs> and other things. Yeah. And her dad was a dragon. Not, like, literally. But, you know. But Stana's dad also turned into a dragon. Yeah, you're right. <laughs> so very yin yang. Yeah, but Stana's dad was like a white dragon, right? And the other guy was like a black dragon. So like right. the duel of the dragons. Mm-hmm. Um, um, yeah. So basically, um, like what I was saying before about Stana trying to figure out the best way to tell about Gavriel. Mm-hmm. Um, eventually, I mean, there's, there's. It's a pretty long interaction, but I mean, they, they share some things. Stana says, I, yeah, when I grew up, I always wanted to be a boy too. Um, they both kind of have that in common. Mm-hmm. Um, 
But then at the end of it, she, um, Theodora says she wants to hear the story. Um, uh, Stana realizes that she never really had a chance to properly grieve Mm -hmm. for Gavriel. And now this is kind of her way of actually doing that. Um, I'm going to reset that. It's her way of actually doing that. And, um, kind of telling his story as a way of letting go. Yeah. Yeah, because, like, when she first... I'm sorry if I'm repeating something you said, so if I am, you can That's cut good. it. But um, Stana says that she's trying to forget Gavriel because she dreamed about him again. And Theodora has a very, like, sweet Constantine-like moment where she's like, I don't expect you to forget him. Mm-hmm. Um, that was really sweet. Yeah. Um, and I think Stana's a little put off by Theodora saying things like, I know you, or like, I know your thoughts or whatever, because she's like, you don't know me because you don't know who I was. You don't know anything about Sarah and what mm-hmm. a struggle that was. Um, and... Yeah, and you're right. This is a way for her to mourn Gavriel as she tells the story of of who they were in their village before and how important they were. Um, I thought it was interesting how when she was talking about how she had at one point wished she was a boy too, she says, I don't wish it anymore though. Like she's mm-hmm. more comfortable with that part of herself now than she was before. So, um, yeah, like big emotions. <laughs> Yeah. In this chapter, for sure. But, They're really putting themselves out there. Yeah, but I am glad to see Stana like processing things instead of just bottling it up and running out into the woods and collapsing. Or you setting know? everything on fire. Or setting things on fire. Yeah. Yeah. So, glad we're getting some processing done. <laughs> um, and it ends with, with her, well, with uh, Theodora saying that's that's like your past it doesn't like that's your history it doesn't have to be your future that doesn't have to be how your story ends you can change you can change how your story ends and then uh, stana says i would like to try right it doesn't have to end with you just waiting for a for a fox to show up yeah and never showing up yeah yep yeah so that's the end of stana's chapter and then we have anna Mm mm-hmm Getting back into a routine at the farmhouse. I love this because she's remembering her old powers and she's like using it to cultivate the land on their farm. Mm -hmm. Um, She's making a garden. Right. She's like, oh, yeah, I have control over plants. Like I this is I'm good at this. Mm -hmm. Um, But there was also this really sad moment where she's like reflecting and she's like, yeah, I told Constantine that I wanted roots, but I didn't tell him that my people are doomed to wander or mm-hmm. cursed to wander. And I was like, Ugh, just gutted. I'm like, oh, mm-hmm. I just want you to be happy. <laughs> yeah, for sure. Um, um, she does, she does make him strawberry cornbread. <laughs> right. Well, she makes cornbread and puts strawberries on it. <laughs> yeah. Like, Cornbread is not a substitute for shortcake. This is no. not strawberry shortcake. <laughs> At least not the kind of cornbread that I've ever had. <laughs> yeah, yeah, for sure. Um, but yeah, this is harkening back to when she planted all those strawberries in the in the woods when they first mm-hmm. arrived. And she said she would feed her husband strawberry cake every day to keep him strong. I was like, oh. Yeah. She's doing the thing. Um, yeah, man. She's, she hopes he can be young and brave. Yeah. And hers always. Yeah. Oh, we also learned that he, he like, applied to go with um, <laughs> Theodora to be her guard uh-huh. in Bulgaria, but it got denied. And I'm like, yeah, what the heck? You just got married, dude. What's wrong with you? Why did you apply for that? Because Theodora's his... Yeah. His d- person. <laughs> Yeah. I don't know. I don't know what yeah. how to describe They're their close. relationship. They're close. They're close. Like he has a lot of allegiance to her. Um, mm-hmm. and I guess if if that happened, maybe they would have let Anna go with. Well, I think, but. and Anna was like, and then he would be able to keep an eye on Stana too, which I think she was like secretly like, yeah, that would be great. And then oh, mm-hmm. then you'd be gone. That'd be a problem. So, 
Um, yeah. She is pregnant. Mm-hmm. Um, and she has everything she could want. But she still feels like a shell of who she once was. She's like, ugh. Gosh dang it. Yeah. We're so close. <laughs> so close. But we still have a good chunk of the book left. So, like, hmm, how long is that going to last? The dragon is back <laughs> messing with people. The black mist is back. The queen hates everything that's happening. Yeah. Uh, Theodore's about to go get married to some random dude. So that's going to be trauma that we'll have to deal with. Probably. Yeah. I feel like I'm not allowed to say anything. Like You're not. <laughs> You're not allowed because you know the answers. Some of them anyway. I know some of the answers. So. Alrighty. Well, that's it for this section, though. So what's our what's our assignment for next time? I should have looked it up beforehand. Sorry, guys. Whoop. Drop the ball. Um... We just have two sister cycles for next time. Okay. Two more. Yep. Sounds good. We only have two weeks of read-along left. Two weeks left. Mm -hmm. So, uh, pretty soon, we're going to have a list out (laughs) of the next next read-along. So, so yeah, if you haven't already uh, subscribed to our Patreon, check that out. If you want some voting rights to vote on our next book that we read along together with y'all during yeah. grammar's a thing <laughs> uh, anyway so that's all I got awesome but until next time happy reading and we'll talk to you next time later bye